Minis Forum asked me to do a performance deep dive with the MSA2. So, here it is. This is a workstation mini PC suitable for many tasks, making use of its fast connectivity. I suppose you can use it for other purposes, but there are plenty of minis better suited for tasks such as content creation or gaming. Anyway, we're going to see how the performance, cooling, fan noise, and much more stack up for this one. The MSA2 has a lot of similarities to the MSO1, which had the same form factor, but featured Intel CPUs. Out of design wise, it's almost identical with the same mostly metal chassis and plastic front panel. The biggest change is the processor. Inside the MSA2 is AMD's Ryzen 9955HX, close to AMD's flagship mobile CPU for pure CPU performance. These chips come with very basic graphics and are designed to be paired with a discrete GPU, which is why you won't see them in regular mini PCs that have a processor with a decent chunk of the die taken up by integrated graphics. But those mini PCs don't come with 16 cores and 32 threads, which makes this a powerful option for a home lab or server. Minis Forum offers the MSA2 in three configurations. Barebones starting at $879 US dollars, going up to $1,500 US dollars for the 96 gigabyte RAM, two terabyte model. The MSA2 comes with a U.2 SSD conversion plate and also includes a power cable for it. There's also a HDMI cable and a giant 19 volt 240 watt power brick. On the front, you'll find a power button, 3.5 millimeter audio jack, dual USB-A 5 gigabit and USB 2. For wireless and Bluetooth, an M.2 Wi-Fi 6 e card is included. The back has dual SFP plus 10 gigabit, dual RJ45 2.5 gigabit, dual USB-C, both supporting display out, HDMI 2.1, USB-A 10 and 5 gigabit. Opening it up is real easy. Press the release latch and pull. The PCIe slot is Gen 4 X8 and supports bifurcation. The limitations for the GPU is that it must be single slot, not require additional power connectors, and be less than 170 millimeters long. I'd also get one with a blower fan if possible, as there's very little cooling here. To get access to the RAM, you need to go through some screws and lift the cooler. Crucial DDR5 5600 is included with this one, and official support is up to 96 gigabytes. On the back, you'll find three M.2 slots after removing the cooler. One supports U.2 with the provided adapter, or up to 22 110 M.2 Enterprise SSDs. All three can run at Gen 4 X4 speeds, but by default, the 2280 slots run at Gen 3 speeds and require you to set them to Gen 4 in the BIOS. Windows 11 Pro is pre-installed and a malware scan came back clean. I also tested Ubuntu and everything looks to be working fine with all the network ports detected. Since the CPU in this one is typically meant to be paired with a discrete GPU, I decided to throw the MSA2 into the benchmark list with those units that have a dedicated GPU or comparable iGPUs for comparison. The MSA2 has a slight victory over the Adamant G7PT in single core Cinebench, which is what you'd hope from the newer generation, but it only really impresses with the performance mode enabled in the BIOS. Multicore, again, only a slight improvement over the G7, and with performance mode, both get a boost. However, now both are almost identical, which is disappointing. Geekbench Single Core shows the 9955HX in this mini to match the Core Ultra 9 275HX. But with the performance mode enabled, it takes the win. Not so in Multicore, although it is faster than the 7945HX in both out of the box and performance mode. Intel typically has kept the lead in H.264 video encoding, and that's still the case here. The performance mode for the MSA2 did nothing to speed things up, with this short test. There's a similar result with AV1, although the time to encode did shave off some seconds for this longer benchmark. The iGPU on the Ryzen 9955HX is light on features and doesn't support AV1 hardware encoding. So let's head on to some AI workloads with Geekbench AI CPU. The MSA2 comes out as the winner. The same test on the GPU, and we see the AI performance is abysmal. The iGPU on this chip is a tiny part of the silicon, and we can see it's very low performance in Firestrike compared to any discrete mobile GPU from the last few years. 
Here's Time Spy and Steel Nomad Lite. Those needing this mini for some GPU workloads might need to invest in a compatible discrete graphics card. Co-compiling performance isn't anything amazing, getting beaten by the two competitors we have data for. Interestingly, the Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 is by far the fastest for Photoshop, with the MSA2's 9955HX far behind. That turns around with the Adobe Premiere Benchmark, which has the MSA2 coming out ahead in performance mode. This 2TB model came with a very fast Crucial SSD. That's one of the best scores we've seen in 3 d Mark storage benchmark. The drive runs hot though, hitting 73C. Bluetooth range is a bit above average. Wi-Fi range is good. I had no issues at 12 meters or 39 feet from the router using the 5G band. The MSA2 uses more power at idle than expected, considering there's no GPU. That's the same as the ASUS ROG NUC 970, which has a mobile discrete GPU. Mini's forums MSA2 maxed out at 148 watts from the wall when put under load. The performance mode added an extra 12 watts, peaking at 160. CPU temp maxes out around 90C, and there's thermal throttling under load. This is a tough chip to cool in such a small space. Fan noise is a weak point of this Mini. Out of the box, idle fan noise is higher than most, but is especially bad in performance mode. Mini's forum has managed to keep the MSA2 under 1.8 litres in volume, which is one of the smaller units of this performance calibre we've seen. The delete key gets you into the BIOS. In advanced, onboard device setting, you'll find the RAID option. 0 and 1 are supported. ACPI setting is where you can find wake on LAN and the power limit option. Hardware monitor has some fan settings while graphics configuration has the bifurcation settings. This is where you can also set the speed to Gen 4, although there's a disclaimer warning you that's not a good idea due to potential overheating. Hmm. Finally, we even have options for overclocking, which I'll quickly scroll through. Okay, now let's hit the mini PC checklist. I like the metal case and build quality, but the price is high, especially compared to the MSO1, which comes with many similar features, just with a slower CPU. There's a MSA2 bare bones option available, which was nice when DRAM prices didn't go through the roof. I'm not a fan of the giant power brick, and there are various other features MIA, with the biggest surprise being the lack of USB 4. This one doesn't have just dual LAN, but quadruple with the SFP Plus ports. The MSA2 is easy to open and has replaceable RAM and storage with three slots available. The 9955HX is a powerful CPU, but the performance isn't anything amazing. I contemplated whether to give it a tick or cross due to the CPU cooling struggling and the mini PC being noisy, especially at idle in performance mode. While the official specs list a reset hole, I don't see it on the outer case for easy access. Mini's forum does BIOS updates from time to time, has driver downloads and a two year warranty, which is longer than the norm. Overall, I found the MSA2 to be a powerful home lab solution. The biggest complaint is the cooling solution for such a power hungry chip. It results in thermal throttling and more fan noise than most mini PCs we look at. That being said, for its intended purpose, it's unlikely to be under a full load very often. There isn't much competition that offers this much PC at this size, so if you're interested, I've linked it in the video description. But maybe you want a similar feature set at a lower price. In that case, you might want to check out the review of the Minis Forum MSO1 right here. Cheers!